This is a review of the iPad Air. It's review time. I've gotten the iPad Air from uh, Apple and uh, my first impression is that it's light and pretty crazy and pretty amazing at the same time. The review itself you can see right here. With the iPad Air, there's no doubt about Apple wanting to make the popular iPad much more transportable. It's 43% thinner and 28% lighter than its predecessor, which you notice instantly when getting it in your hands. The design is beautiful and it has clearly inherited the iPad Mini's look in general. The sleeker edge looks great in the big size and it looks more modern and future-esque. In the bottom you'll find better speakers, which is of course a nice addition and I'm really liking the new color Space Grey. Under the hood of the iPad Air you'll find Apple's A7 chip with 64 bits of processing power and a larger and better battery boost the general life of it a lot. Keeping the big screen and machinery alive of course takes some power but still manages to give you about 10 hours of usage. The price is where the Air also shines and might be hitting a more acceptable price spot in the market with the 16GB Wi-Fi version at around $499 and of course the biggest in the line the 128GB Wi-Fi cellular version priced at $929. With a lot of Apple's own free new software from the beginning and the new iOS 7, there's no doubt about Apple is delivering a great tablet experience. And it's without any doubt also a response to other tablet producers whom are breathing down Apple's neck. But the iPad Air is a strong response and besides the free software, the ever-evolving App Store is always a key player. It has the same resolution and pixel layout as the previous iPad, which is probably where some might have expected more of the Air. With the competition's big focus on screen and visual power, maybe the thought of less lifetime on battery is what has kept Apple from making big changes here. We don't know. It would have been nice with some upgrades on this front though. The new iOS 7 camera as seen on the iPhone 5S with features like slow motion and burst mode is not available on the iPad Air nor the iPad mini with retina display. It's clear that the camera on the iPad itself is not a big point of focus for Apple, seeing as most of their users probably use it for Skype or FaceTime calls. Worth mentioning is that if you're going to be using a lot of the apps or just want to check out the new free software apps from Apple, well then steer away from the 16GB version. The new HD content is a lot larger and quickly takes up more space on your iPad. So to most, the 16GB version will pretty much be useless. With the iPad Air, Apple does exactly what it sets out to do, and that is to create another tablet in one of the most dominating tablet lineups ever and putting the focus where it's most important. And that's creating a tablet that is easily integrated into your life and as the first ever iPad creates a need that you didn't know you had. If you're in doubt about what tablet is right for you, well then give it a go with all the different types and versions from all brands. Tablet is about taste and personal opinions and not just hardware specifications. Find the tablet that makes your life more fun or effective and let that be your guide. Apple has done its part to try to make sure that the iPad Air is just that tablet. Let us know in the comment section below if you agree on uh, my opinion about this little thing. Also, of course, join the debate if you do not agree, then we can duke it out in the comment section. Remember to like and subscribe if you like what we're doing here on Pixel TV.